Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. I'm Anton, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Nintendo Switch Lite. Is it the best Nintendo handheld ever created, or the best Nintendo Switch? Let's find out. In the beginning of 2019, we got a couple of rumors from the Wall Street Journal about two new Switch versions that were supposedly in the works. This led many to believe a Switch Mini and a Switch Pro were coming later in 2019. Although people were hoping for a redesigned Pro model, there was quite a lot of confusion and doubt around the Mini. The main argument that was presented was, oh, but if it doesn't have removable Joy-Cons and can't dock to a television, then you really can't call it a Switch and other people thought it wouldn't happen due to Nintendo Labo and Super Mario Party, and a lot of other games not being a good fit for the portable system. However, on the other side of the argument, a smaller, cheaper, and strictly handheld version made sense in a lot of ways, as it would replace the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. Well, on July 10th, 2019, Nintendo dropped out of nowhere a reveal trailer on their YouTube channel. Slightly before that point, there had been countless rumblings and leaks relating to the system, especially accessories. In the video, Nintendo announced a release date, September 20th, 2019, the same day that Link's Awakening was scheduled to release. Also, the system was not called the Mini, but rather the Switch Lite, as it lacks many of the features of the original Switch. For the Switch Pro, however, well, that really didn't come into fruition. Instead, the Switch got a slight revision with a different chip that would not only compact against piracy measures, but it would also increase the efficiency of the system, which would lead to a better battery life. It also had a shiny new bright red box that looked miles better than the original. Now, let's unbox the Nintendo Switch Lite. The box overall looks very nice, and it showcases the system off perfectly. Now let's open it. On the top, we have the instructions, followed by the unit itself. Removing the system allows us to gain access to the hidden compartment, which houses the charger. And that's really it. Compared to the regular Switch, there's not much here. And there doesn't need to be, as this is a dedicated handheld system. The design of the system is obviously really similar to the original, as it looks much nicer and sleeker in comparison. When going from the Switch Lite to the original, more expensive model, it actually feels quite awkward, as the form factor is leaks better. The system itself feels more portable. I wouldn't mind taking it places, or just using it around the house. Obviously, people who travel would probably prefer it more, due to the lack of a TV. The Nintendo Switch can feel really bulky as well. There is a large border around the screen that doesn't look very nice, and the Joy-Cons have a lot of bare space towards the bottom. The Switch Lite doesn't have that space, or a large border at all, because the Joy-Cons are just part of the system, which means that there doesn't need to be any Bluetooth components making the system smaller. By cutting corners from the original system, that was the only way to get the system looking sleeker and smaller as it is. The display on the system is 720p, the same resolution as the original, although because the display itself is smaller, the pixels are less noticeable. One complaint with the original Switch is that it wasn't 1080p, but it was 720p. But this is obviously uh, still a huge upgrade when you think about Nintendo consoles to the Nintendo 3DS's display, as that was 240p. So what corners were cut from the original system? Well, the system lacks the IR camera and kickstand, so I guess if you had your heart set on playing 1-2-Switch, then get that out of your head. The system lacks the ability to be docked, as it does not contain a HDMI out board, even if you manage to connect it to a dock. The Switch Lite also doesn't have HD rumble, or any type of rumble. This can feel really awkward and weird in games that use the rumble feature, like Super Mario Odyssey. Even Mario Kart 8 Deluxe felt a little strange because I'm so used to the rumble and it reflects the game really well. The system still comes with accelerometers and gyro sensors for the motion controls, and the NFC slash rider is also included for all of your amiibo related needs. Also, the Lite uses the same chip as the revised model, therefore it cannot be modded to run any custom firmware. But on the bright side, the battery life is extended. 
Custom firmware may be possible in the near future, but we will have to wait and see about that. The system also has Bluetooth capabilities, so you can connect to wireless controllers if you want to experience tabletop mode. And this also opens up the ability to play local co-op modes as well. But the Switch controllers can be quite expensive, so it might not be a wise decision to go buy a pair of Joy-Cons for the system as it would make sense to go buy them for the regular Switch. There isn't a kickstand too, so you might need to figure out your own solution for that as well. The pastel colors look beautiful. They definitely did something different here to make the system both appeal to kids with the bright colors and adults as the colors are very modern and calm. From the early trailers, I thought it would more look toy-like, similar to the colors used on the Game Boy Color, but that isn't the case at all. The colors as of now are turquoise, yellow, grey coral, and they have white buttons that contrast very nicely. There is also a Pokemon Sword Slash Shield edition that is grey and has colored buttons that match the logo colors of the games. Hopefully, they follow these up with lime, purple, and maybe some more special editions in the future. The buttons are also different compared to the original system. They're more mushy and feel the same as the Pro Controller. The analog sticks are the same as the original system, although because of this, they are prone to Joy-Con drift problems. And not only that, they can't really be replaced as easily, just like the Joy-Cons. It is disappointing that they didn't fix this issue. I've noticed it a little on my Joy-Cons and even the Switch Lite a little bit, but I don't use it as much as my main system anyway, and I use the Pro Controller more, so it doesn't affect me too much. But on the positive side, the system has a D-pad. It feels really good and mushy. You're definitely gonna love it for 2D games. However, it is disappointing that it doesn't work for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, which actually doesn't even support the D-pad at all, which I find really peculiar, since that game was originally built for a D-pad anyways, but, but I guess I should save that for a Link's Awakening review. The Nintendo Switch truly has a fantastic library, and majority of the software work very well on the system. Games like Link's Awakening, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Super Mario Odyssey, the, the list just keeps going on. However, some titles like I mentioned before, such as Super Mario Party, Ring Fit Adventure, and Nintendo Labo, aren't compatible with the system because they don't support handheld mode. Well, you might be able to get it working, but you might need to have a pair of Joy-Cons to play it in table mode, so it's not very practical and a good experience. And some modes that are built for local co-op don't work very well either, so you end up not being able to play some modes in some games. So to check if a game supports handheld mode, you need to take a look at the back of the game case or on the Nintendo eShop to see if it supports it. As you might know, the Nintendo 3DS family of systems have been around for quite some time. Even after the release of the Nintendo Switch Lite, Nintendo still has yet to pull the 2DS systems off of store shelves. This is because of the price difference and great library that the line has established. But is the 2DS better than the Switch Lite, even if the handheld is cheaper? Well, the games on the Switch Lite are definitely better. Sure, you have a great library, but most of those games feel like pick up and play experiences. Take Luigi's Mansion 2 compared to Luigi's Mansion 3. The graphical capabilities and resolution are multiple times better. But if you are on a tight budget or looking for a quick Christmas gift, they are definitely great for a first time introduction to Nintendo games. Now, who is the system intended for? Well, I do believe that the system is intended for people who travel a lot and don't necessarily need the other accessories. The system is good for younger children as well because of this sturdy build, and it is a great option since the price is better for people who can't afford the full system. Overall, the Nintendo Switch Lite is another quality product from Nintendo. It definitely is a great entry point for many gamers who are on a tight budget, although it does lack quite a lot of features and abilities that don't present the best experience. And for a little bit more, you could argue that you might as well buy the regular version of the console. So, is it the best Nintendo handheld? Well, if you consider the Switch a home console, then yes, it definitely is. But is it the best Nintendo Switch? And well, that might be up to you and depending on your situation, but obviously it isn't the best Nintendo Switch. It does have some of its own offerings and features that make it appealing, but the original is a hundred times better in my opinion, and the price difference shows that too. And if you're thinking of buying the Nintendo Switch Lite to use at the same time as your regular Switch, I don't really recommend that because the save file transfer is quite tedious and the cloud saves don't work very well between multiple systems. So unless it's for collecting purposes, then it's probably not the greatest idea. That's why I've decided to give the Nintendo Switch Lite an 8.5 out of 10. 
Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future content on the channel. And don't forget to comment down below in the comment section. I'd love to see your opinions and thoughts about the Nintendo Switch Lite. And I will see you guys in the next one.